Here I am going to discuss about uh, static uh, RAM and dynamic RAM memories. Both these memories are volatile memories means uh, whenever the power is available to these chips they will retain the data and whenever power is uh, removed so they will lose their data. The memory classification can be broadly done as shown here random access memory and read only memory and SRAM and DRAM both comes under the category of RAM and there is another memory that is NVRAM non-volatile RAM and it is basically an SRAM with a battery built into the IC chip and flash memory E square ROM and hard disk drives comes under the category of ROM and the size of ROMs memories are generally high compared to the size of RAM because the cost of RAM is very high but the advantage of uh, RAM memories is the access time that is uh, the CPU uh, the time taken by the CPU to access these memories are very less because of that the RAM memories are used for specific purpose like uh, storing of temporary variables or uh, temporary files which makes the CPU operation fast so the RAM memories are not used for permanent storage of the data the ROM memories are used for permanent storage of the data so before going uh, into uh, the logic discussion of SRAM and DRAM, so we need to know uh, the switching device operation. This is a PMOS switch which is a P-channel metal oxide semiconductor switch and this is an NMOS that is N-channel metal oxide semiconductor switch and the two table of these uh, switches here is shown here uh, below. Whenever the input is high for the PMOS uh, switch so the switch is off whenever the input is uh, low for this uh, PMOS switch so the device will be on and uh, for NMOS the operation is reversed so whenever the input is high so the switch that is the it is on and whenever the input is low it is off and the CMOS technology is there complementary metal oxide semiconductor technology so by using these uh, PMOS and NMOS so the logics can be designed and here we can see this is the inverter so which is a CMOS uh, inverter which is having both uh, PMOS and NMOS switch so the inverter logic is whenever the input is high the output will be low and whenever the input is low the output will be high and this is the symbol for that here you can see how the inverter uh, works so whenever it you know input is high so this will be off and this will be on so the output will be low that is ground and whenever the input is low so this is on and this is off so the output will be high so the VDD will come at the output coming to a static RAM memory here you can see the basic SRAM memory cell so which stores one bit of the data so with uh, six switches T1 and T2 are NMOS switches and T3 and T4 are PMOS switches again T5 and T6 are PAS uh, switches uh, and they are also NMOS uh, uh, type and this is inverter 1 and this is inverter 2 so inverter is uh, made of by using uh, P that is PMOS and NMOS switch and inverter 2 is also of same uh, type and uh, the output of inverter 2 is connected to the input of inverter 1 and output of inverter 1 is connected to input of this uh, inverter 2 and these both inverters are acting as uh, latch and they are retaining one bit of data here we can see the equivalent SRAM cell both these inverter 2 and inverter 1 are replaced by their uh, symbols and here we can see the write operation that is how the one bit is written into the SRAM memory cell so whenever that uh, bit line that is zero bit need to be uh, uh, written so that uh, bit line is made as zero because uh, and then uh, t5 and t6 are activated because this address line is or uh, word line is activated and then t5 and t6 are switched on and when they are switched on this bit zero is applied uh, to this uh, output of uh, inverter 2 and at the same time it is applied to the in, uh, input of uh, inverter 1 and similarly so the complement of bit uh, is applied uh, to the output of inverter 1 and uh, the input of inverter 2 so because of that t3 and uh, t2 are switched on 
and t1 and t4 are switched off so because of that zero that is zero is retained in this inverter and winner inverter two which are acting as a latch and similarly whenever bit one need to be written into the sram memory cell so the operation can be uh, as shown so bit line is made as uh, one so the similarly the complement of this bit is written uh, to this uh, complementary bit line and then uh, this uh, address line is activated then t5 and t6 are switched on and because of that uh, t3 and uh, t2 are switched off and t1 and t4 are switched on and because of that one bit is retained in the latch of inverter 1 and inverter 2 and uh, coming to a uh, dynamic ram uh, memory here uh, so the bits are stored by using the transistor and the capacitor here the count of the switches or parts that are used for storing the one bit are very less compared to the sram here one transistor one capacitor are used for storing the one bit of the data and uh, whenever the bit need to be returned so the capacitor uh, need to be uh, charged and whenever the bit to be read so and the capacitor uh, need to be discharged and here you can see the write operation so whenever uh, the bit 1 it to be written to this uh, dynamic ram memory cell so the bit line is made as 1 and then the address line or also known as word line is activated then t1 is switched on which is also known as this is the pass uh, transistor or pass switch and because of that current will flow into the capacitor and this is the capacitor uh, charging equation whenever the current flows the voltage will be built up across the capacitor and uh, the capacitor charges with a certain voltage vc and uh, similarly the read operation can be done as shown so uh, this whatever the uh, voltage that is present inside the capacitor need to be uh, read for the read operation so because of that the address line is activated uh, the, the t1 is switched on and this uh, capacitor voltage is read and the bit line uh, value will become 1 DRAM uh, memory cells lose their state over a time because the, we are using uh, capacitors for storing the data and the capacitors is having a disadvantage that they will uh, lose their charge over a period of time and because of that the DRAM memory cells need to be uh, refreshed periodically in addition to read and write operation so there is an additional operation for the DRAM memory cell that is a refresh operation and because of that so the dynamic uh, RAM memory have got the name uh, dynamic and it is very simple as we have seen it uh, only consists of uh, one transistor one capacitor for storing the uh, uh, one bit of uh, the uh, data and as a result it can be densely packed on the silicon chip compared to the SRAM and it is also very cheap compared to the SRAM and here you can see the refresh operation of the dynamic RAM so whenever the one uh, that is voltage corresponding to bit one is stored so after every certain period of time so it uh, this time is uh, defined by the manufacturer of the DRAM memory it need to be refreshed it need to be again uh, charged to a voltage corresponding to the bit one and uh, this process involves the periodic reading of the information so how this memory refresh is done so the process involves the periodic reading of the information from the certain section of the memory that is this DRAM memory and immediate rewriting of the read information to the every same area without making any changes. So refresh operation involves so reading of the data from the capacitors and again writing that the same data so after every refresh time that is defined by the manufacturer. This is the question I have taken from Wikipedia with respect to a DRAM chip. Uh, if DRAM chip is having 2 power 13 rows that is 8192 rows a refresh interval of 64 millisecond means after every 64 millisecond the DRAM need to be refreshed and the memory bus runs at 133 mega H and uh, the refresh cycle takes 4 clause cycle for each row and here we need to calculate the length of the refresh cycle for each row which comes around 30 nanosecond that is uh, 4 divided by the bus frequency and the time required for total uh, DRAM uh, is 8192 that is number of rows into 30 nanosecond so 0.24 millisecond is the uh, time taken by this DRAM to refresh 
and this is the comparison of SRAM and DRAM so these are the parameters and both SRAM and DRAM are having uh, pros and the cons if you take the speed SRAM is having the advantage and if you uh, take the cost and density DRAM is having the advantage and uh, here you can see this SRAM is used in cache memory and whereas DRAM is used in main memory so here you can see so what is the cache memory and what is main memory both these memories are volatile memories which are used for uh, temporary storage of variables here you can see both uh, comes under the primary storage the cache memory which is located on the processor itself whereas the main memory is located on the motherboard that is uh, near to the uh, processor and the processor and this main memory need to be connected through a memory bus because of that the access time of the main memory that is DRAM is uh, high compared to the access uh, of uh, cache memory because of that so the cache memories are generally used for the storage of uh, the frequently used variable so that the CPU uh, can directly access the cache memory instead of the main memory. Thank you for watching my video.